Hey everyone, Ammon here with my first AFL video. Um, yeah, we've mainly just done rugby and like some UFC stuff uh, so far. So yeah, this is gonna be my first first look at another sport other than those two. Um, yeah, I don't know, like, do I know anything about AFL? Um, I don't think I do. I don't. I, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you a single rule. I don't think. Um, I do know it's like I believe it's more popular than like rugby and league in Australia from what I remember from some of you guys commenting about it um, on my rugby videos um, but yeah I don't think I know anything other than that I'm going to assume it might be some sort of like a rugby soccer hybrid maybe is kind of what I is like my best guess for what it would be like um, yeah I don't I don't really have anything to go off of other than that because I, yeah, I don't think I've seen it at, like at all whatsoever it was actually really surprising when you guys said that it was like I think I'm pretty sure you guys said it's more popular than rugby in Australia. So yeah, really, really, really curious to see. Yeah, if, if you guys are checking this out for the checking out my channel for the first time, um, yeah, hi, I'm Eamon. Um, we do mainly rugby stuff, rugby and league stuff, but I'm trying to trying to branch out a bit. So we'll probably do a bunch of uh, AFL stuff in the next few weeks. And I was looking at I think cr cricket. I might check out too, but we'll see how much. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's better if I just dive into like one thing at a time, uh, for now at least. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we are gonna we're just gonna dive into this. I, I found this one video. Um, it's called where is it? What is AFL Australian Rules Football Explained Updated Twenty Twenty Four? It's by Blue Abroad. So make make sure to drop them a sub and like their video. Um, I'll have all that stuff in the in the description below, so you can go check them check them out because they're the ones who made the content. Um, but yeah, let's just, I think we'll just dive into this. Um, yeah, like I was saying, I don't really have anything to go off of other than that, like, the name is Australian Wheels Football, so I don't know if it would be Australia's take on, like, American football or if it's Australia's take on soccer. I don't know. I think both would be pretty cool, I guess. Like, what would, Amer what would Aussie rules, like, American football be about Australian rules? Like a rugby football hybrid, maybe, or I think it's probably more like a, a rugby rugby soccer hybrid. Is yeah, that that'd be my guess before you hop into this. But yeah, yeah, there's no point in me speculating. I can just watch the video right now and get an explanation. So we'll just do that. Um, yeah, if you end up liking the video, make sure to drop a sub, drop a like, comment where I should go from here. I guess like should I dive into highlights and stuff of, of the AFL, or should I do more like history of the sport type thing? Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know. But yeah, let's just let's just hop in this video. Okay, let's see what this is about. A game in which players soar like eagles. Get a score. Where a player can run between twelve and twenty kilometers a game. What the heck am I looking at? A game that's fast paced and brutal. Ooh, okay. Definitely some type of rugby. A rugby game that thing. says the meek may inherit the earth but they will never win games of football. This is AFL. Okay. For me, this is the greatest sport in the world. So let's look at the greatest competition of them all, the AFL. You would allude to it as the Australian version of the English Premier League, the NBA, the NFL. It's the most watched competition by far in mm. Australia. Okay. It's the fourth yeah. most attended sport in the world. In the world. Wow. The AFL itself looks is so cool. contested by 18 sides. That are all that stadium is sick. wonderful history and fabulous it here. Let me it here. What would be my favorite logo here? Let me see. Do, 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 do. Adelaide Crow, that's a cool logo. The power team in the middle, that's also a cool logo. Um the Fremantle Dockers, that's also a cool logo. There's some, there's some really nice logos. St. KFC, <laughs> Richmond, is that Richmond Tigers, yeah. Fox, North Melbourne, yeah, some cool logos there, Green, the Green, or Geelong Cats, <laughs> what's that one at the top there, Mensana, oh, it's like some Latin stuff, yeah, cool logos, let me just go here, go. <laughs> The game itself is played between 18 players on the on the field of play at any one time. Okay. With an interchange bench of four players that can it's be nine on each side. 90 times. They play over four 20-minute quarters with time added on. Four 20-minute quarters. All the players that line up in a certain formation. Okay. So to go through it, you've got your full forward line um, that are comprised of two forward pockets and a full forward. 
These guys genuinely there are to attack the goal and trap the ball in the goal area. You may hear the terms pressure forwards. You may hear the terms crumbs if you watch the game. These guys are your okay. strikers of the league, In your fo- to use a soccer analogy. Then you've got your half forwards. Okay. These guys are there to... But why do they start at the back, though? Like If they're the forwards, shouldn't they be on that side? Or do you score on your own... Right, we'll find out. Scoring shots to attack the goal as well and are also charged with forward pressure and locking the ball in that area. And they will be very similar, okay. I would say, to an attacking winger in the soccer. Kind of, you know, like your Cristiano Ronaldo when he was a United player. Very adventurous, marauding forward type player. Hmm. Then you have your centre line players. Now, these guys are the ones who recover the ball from the back line, look to set up shots, get the ball forward. They predominantly run two ways. Kind of... They're made up as well with the two guys on the outside there, your wingers. They're mm-hmm. kind of very rehearsed in defensive and forward. Kind of like a wing back would probably be the best way to describe them. Okay. Not quite an attack. I'm not super familiar with soccer positions either, so this doesn't help me too much. But, <laughs> but they're Probably the most important part of the game. Then you've got your okay. half-back line. Now they're the, to recover the ball from the back line and to clear the ball to the midfield and to the forward line. These guys okay. genuinely... Uh, very quick, the smaller players on the flanks, the halfback flanks. And you have a term you hear a lot, key defenders and key forwards. These usually the players that are in the centre of the halfback line and the centre okay. of the fullback line, who, again, their job is to be a defender, to really lock down, get the ball out of the defensive 50 and to spoil all marks. And you can see that here, this is the format you can kind of evenly spread. And then you've got these interesting ones here. They're called followers. Now, this is quite confusing for someone new to the game. But they're comprised of a ruckman and two on ballers. So hmm. a traditional name is the ruck rover and the rover. So the generally these okay, guys wait, you see. At sorry, the am I, did I miss? Okay, I think I think I, think I, think I misread something. Okay, there's 18 players on each side, is what I'm gathering, right? Because he doesn't seem to be. He seems to be saying these are all are all like on one team, from what I'm understanding, right? So there's 18 players on each team, which means yeah, well, it's like 30. Is it 36? With math, 36, yeah. Stops at centre bounds particularly. You'll see these guys around the centre. Okay. Usually comprising of one really tall guy and two smaller players. And these guys are genuinely there to get the ball out of congestion. They're real tough. They go in and get the ball. These guys usually genuinely are the strong, hard men of the competition. And really the exciting players to watch. Okay. They play on a ground that dwarfs a standard soccer field in really all the known fields that they play sport, particularly the American ones. Like we say, they cover up to 20 kilometers per game, the average midfielder does in the AFL. That's wild. The game premise is to move the ball from one end to the other, and there is three predominant ways to do that. One is the handball, where the player uses their fist to reject the ball to teammates. It's a very unusual style. You may see something similar in Gaelic football if you're... Are akin to what interesting, that. so it's not but throwing, it you have to like punch the it. AFL. The other more obvious method is the kick, and that's where they can gain up to 50 meters at a time, aiming okay. to try and hit a player up to get a mark, or they do kick to space and allow players to run on. And the final way to move, and Indeed. it's something that you see a lot more in modern day AFL, very similar to the basketball, they have to run with the ball at hand, but cool. just bounce it once every 15 meters. There isn't a limit how much okay. they could do that. You could run one end to the ground to the other if you do that. Okay. Very rare, though, because the game doesn't allow much space. And when we're kicking, we're looking for these marks. Now, it's one of the most spectacular aspects of the oh. AFL. And it's something that you don't see really in any other sport as exciting as this. And it's a game that oh, allows you to use the opposition as a stepladder. <laughs> the ball must travel 15 metres without anyone touching it prior to the player marking the ball. And it can't hit the ground. And if you do that successfully, we call it a paid mark. And that's where a player gets effectively a free kick from wherever he is on the ground with okay. a 10 metre protection area to play his next kick. Perhaps the most common mark you'll see, and the biggest aim is to mark inside 50. Now, you'll notice on the field as it comes up now, there's these little red lines indicating where the 50 are, these semicircular arcs. Okay. If a player successfully takes a mark inside 50, they get 30 seconds to attempt to score a goal. And the object of the goal is to kick through the two middle posts. If you do that, okay. you'll get six points. If you hit the post okay. or you get it through the other posts, or a player takes it of the opposition and runs it through the behind, 
runs it through the goal. If there's no own goals in this game, it's a single point, resulting in the opposition getting the ball and there will be a restart from that goal square there in the defensive 50. Okay. The game start is a really, I think, iconic part of AFL and it's something that really attracted me and it's called the centre bounce and this happens at the start of each quarter and after every goal and it is very similar to an NBA tip-off. It's contested between two ruckmen who will then attempt to jostle position with each other while jumping for a ball in the air and attempt to tap it down to their rovers or a tap it to punch it ball forward and get it away from the congestion. Interesting. Perhaps the most entertaining part for any foreigner is how we have our restarts in the game. You'll notice that when the ball goes out the sidelines, we have a, a throw-in. And you'll see how the umpires throw it in. They get a lot, a lot of distance of that. And they mm -hmm. create a mini version of the bounce between the two ruckmen. And it's really, mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes, an umpire-led throw-in. It's a real weird part of yeah. the game. That's it's something awesome. that you amuse he me just like throws it. in this great sport. Now, tackling is one of the best parts. Ooh. It's a very physical style of game. And if you're familiar, oh, like oh. I am in the north of England, rugby league, tackling is one of the iconic parts. Ooh. And it's what we all enjoy doing as kids. Tackling is permitted, but it's got to be between the shoulders and above the knees. And you'll hear the okay. crowd, if you watch the game, scream ball. And what they're trying to do is request the holding the ball rule, which means every time a player is tackled, they are given enough time to dispose of that ball. They must release the ball either via legal handball or a kick. And if they don't have the opportunity, it's called paying holding the ball. Okay. Or you'll hear no prior, which means you're tackled before you have the opportunity to release it. We also have wonderful okay. moments like bumps and shepherds off the ball. A shepherd is where a player, player effectively bumps or uses his shoulder to shoulder to protect another ball carrier from a tackle. And obviously the bumps you'll see quite often in a thing we have called taggers. Now taggers will remind you of players like Patrick Vieira and Roy Keane. Enforcers, they stop the good players playing okay. and they look to stifle the opposition with bumps okay, off the there's ball. There's some enforcers, okay, that's tactics. similar to hockey. Now, our wonderful AFL season over here has played over 22 fabulous games with the top okay. eight making up the finals. And if we look at it, the top eight can be one of the most confusing things in the world. But as you can see here okay, yeah, with just... this graph, the top four go into what is called a qualifying final, where okay. first and second place will be at home and fourth and third will be away in that contest. And the losers of them games will go into what's called a semi-final and they will be playing... Five, six, seven, and eight. Five and six play in an elimination final. It's a knockout style type event. And the winner of that gets to play the loser of these qualifying finals. Interesting. And then the winner of that goes on to whoever won the qualifying first and the qualifying second. Sounds quite confusing, but if you follow that graph, it should get you through. And then yeah, we're at the biggest it's, it's dance. It's pretty straightforward. Just a little interesting. People in 100, September at the MCG. On a national day's holiday, if you live here in wow. Melbourne, we That's all awesome. got the day off to watch it. You <laughs> grab yourself a barbecue, grab yourself a nice cool beer, and you sit down and you cheer on your team or whoever you've adopted that day and cheer them onto glory. But it's not just team, awesome. team glory that we have in the <laughs> AFL. Whoever finishes top of the ladder wins what's called the minor premiership. Minor, it's not minor really premiership, that important. similar to No one really uh, talks about it. It's kind of just you've got the first qualifying final. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, also, yes, that's like in. Um, yeah, I think you guys said for the NRL, like teams do celebrate the minor premiership. Like it's a big deal to win that. But obviously the major is like the big thing. But this one, it seems more like, yeah, like winning the winning the main title is like the end be all end all. Like no one cares about the minor premiership at all. That's that's how it is in hockey too. Like there's the President's Trophy in hockey, which is first place in, during the season, and like it it's like no one cares about it like at all. It means absolutely nothing to to like ninety nine point nine percent of the population. But yeah, so that's cool. They yeah, have the Brownlow Medal though, and that is a bit like yeah. I've always not really understood like celebrating regular season success. Like it's not yeah. Like it's cool, I guess, but like yeah, winning the actual playoffs is what matters our fifa player of the year and it's a very okay. interesting way it's done it's voted by the umpires on the ground that day they give mm -hmm. a three two one and vote for the top okay. three players on the ground and it's called the best and fairest and if you get suspended throughout the year you forfeit your right to win the vote interesting it's a very tough competition to win like carrot top? And only the cream <laughs> rise to the top top there we have a Coleman medal for the leading goal kicker, and the leading goal kicker over here can range anywhere from 60 to 100 goals a year. And we Jeez. have a Rising Star Award that's given to the best player aged 20 or under, 
on nice. January the okay. 1st that year and must have can a player win the best newcomer award more than once if he like still under 20 he played 10 or less games oh, no, at okay. the start Ten or of less. that calendar okay. year but for me the greatest thing about this game of footy isn't the game itself it isn't the marks it isn't the spectacular wonderful goals <laughs> and virtuoso goals but it's about the fans it's about the cheer squad who use their spare time to make wonderful banners for the players to <laughs> go, run through at the start of the game. The noise they make, the chants they make. It's the rivalries that make up this game, and it's a friendly rivalry. Unlike the vicious rivalries we have in soccer in the UK, it's banter and it's fun, and it's not death at all costs. Okay, cool. It's retaining the equal passion for both sides and the love of the game. That's and good. It's about how spiritual this game is how we remember our indigenous forefathers for allowing us to play this great game on the allow the great okay. grounds that the land is represented on. It's mm -hmm. the community rounds we have, the indigenous round, the wonderful Guernseys, the wonderful dances we have at the start of the game. It's about bringing a whole nation together. Okay, cool. Whole... Is, he, is he kind of saying that the sport like originated with the, uh, with like the Aboriginal people there? Is that what they're going with? Like I know, mm -hmm. They compared to rugby. I know rugby was kind of. I feel like yeah, rugby was brought to Australia, and New Zealand from from like England and, and such. But was this sport more? It's like based off of more like an Aboriginal game that was already there. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna assume some, something like that. Well, let me know though. I, I I don't know for sure. Whole nation stops March to September to watch this great thing for me. But perhaps I'll save the best. It's for awesome. Last. The iconic team song. The most iconic things in soccer are watching at Anfield singing You Never Walk Alone. It's a wonderful <laughs> sight. But there's nothing so charismatic, I think, but seeing 22 blokes after they've won gathering <laughs> the changing rooms to sing their famous song. And it is a it's wonderful each team thing has their own song. a wonderful okay. spectacle and a wonderful sight. This Ooh. is the wonderful game of oh, AFL okay, footy, Ooh, the greatest game in the world. Welcome to a sport <laughs> hey, that the... combines not only the <laughs> ferociousness of rugby league, yes. the silky skills of soccer, the theatre okay. of wrestling, the pantomime of NFL, all done without <laughs> pads and a script. This is AFL, and this is sport, and it's oh, awesome. purest. What an intro. Yeah, okay, that was wild. All right, so that was our first look into AFL. Um... That was really cool. I, I don't know what I was expecting, but yeah, I it was I was kind of like yeah, it was, it's kind of similar to like rugby and soccer. It was kind of what I was saying. Yeah, it gave me that gave me that vibe when we watched it. But yeah, no, that, awesome. I um, was I mean I, I I'll have to. It's gonna take me a while to like understand the rules. Obviously, as you guys saw, if you watch my rugby stuff, it took me it took me a little while to get everything down. But yeah, that it looks really cool. Like the the premise looks awesome. Um, yeah, I mean you can't go wrong with like big hits and skilled skilled like kick plays and stuff like that's all that's obviously like really cool um yeah so i definitely want to keep like checking that out because that yeah it looked awesome um i yeah i guess put yeah put me on the right path you guys let me let me know what, where i should go from here in terms of like a video to react to um i might need to do like maybe i can do like a history of afl video um that might help me uh, a bit more just with the backstory um and i guess maybe i should do an actual like maybe like an in-depth rules video or i can just go on uh, on wikipedia and do that um yeah no it, it looks awesome though i I, I, did, I did not realize how like how big it was at all that's that's wild like the the fans look insane there the the stadium looks crazy um yeah that's they said 100,000 people at that stadium that's that's insane do, do the rugby teams play there or the league teams sorry um yeah no that that looks crazy yeah so it just yeah like initial thoughts yeah it looks awesome um definitely want to check it out more um yeah just like i was saying point me in the right direction for what's next um if you've seen other guys react to uh afl before yeah just let me know kind of like what uh what what next um maybe i'll get us jump into some like generic like highlight videos um just so i can see more like gameplay i guess but um yeah for sure for sure need to need to do a deep dive into this because this this looks awesome um yeah we'll just end it there make sure to drop a sub if you enjoyed my reaction um yeah definitely definitely gonna keep checking out more more uh more afl because it looks it look sick yeah like the video comment comment yeah just comment uh stuff i might have missed some click clarify some stuff i had a lot of questions i'm sure um i totally 
the first couple things where they going over the positions they I, I totally thought it was like nine versus nine not not 18 versus 18 which is that's an insane amount of players but um yeah no it's, it's it seems really cool so yeah i'm excited i'm excited to keep checking it out um yeah we'll send it there thanks for, thanks for watching everyone